Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by Jiffy Steamer, the largest steamer manufacturer in the world. It started in 1940 right here in Obion County, Tennessee. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at jiffysteamer.com. Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast, everyone. This is the podcast where we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee, and I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Emily, before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? So I found out that we have three different places at Discovery Park that feature David Crockett. We have a statue in the settlement, an exhibit of Crockett's political career in Liberty Hall, and a print of his portrait by John Gapsby Chapman on display in the Regional History Gallery. That is very interesting. And we also have Mill Ridge, which has a grist mill, which Crockett had. We have exhibits um, at Liberty Hall. Um, So you can really find Crockett spread out throughout our 50 acres and throughout our 100,000 square foot museum. So that was a good one. Thank you, Emily. Today's guest um, has a fascinating story. He and his wife are the founders of Dogwood BJJ, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu gym in Dyersburg, just down the road from Discovery Park. Welcome, John. Thank you for having me. How are y'all doing today? Man, we are we are doing incredible. Um, we were just talking, um, Luke and I were just talking about bike riding and how we feel better every day after we've exercised. Um, and so you're going to talk a little bit too about healthy lifestyle and healthy living and and um, what that means to you and to the people of our region. But first of all, I'm fascinated uh, by where you came from and how you ended up in Dyersburg. So tell us a little bit about your backstory. Okay. That's, you know, it's an interesting story. And we kind of segued into it. Uh, I'm from South Texas. So Davy Crockett is kind of has a special place in my heart because I'm from San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo. So, uh, you know, I've grown up hearing about Davy and all those guys and now moving to Tennessee. It's very interesting. Um, I ended up coming here because I married a local. So, you know, I met my wife in San Antonio, Texas. And after a couple of years there, we moved to Denver, Colorado, to train with UFC veteran Brad gum. So, um, you know, he fought in the UFC UFC. So, you know, he taught mixed martial arts, which is a style of training where you combine aspects of different martial arts, uh, and combine it together. So, um, you know, I came from South Texas, then we moved to Denver for about a decade or 12 years training up there. And me and my wife had a little boy and decided to move where we were around family. So it was either South Texas, or Tennessee, and we decided on Tennessee. As did Davy Crockett. He he moved here, um, and then he went to Texas for a very short time. But yeah, I too uh, went to high school in Texas, and so I'm with you. I have that Texas and Tennessee uh, uh, connection. Texas and Tennessee have a lot um, of connections. I found out later on. You, you were uh, when you were a young uh, a young Texan. Did you have interest in the martial arts at that point or where did that develop? You know, um, it's kind of interesting. I I never had any uh, formal training when I was young. Um, You know, I kind of grew up in the inner city and uh, there wasn't a lot of martial arts available where I was located. And uh, but I was always intrigued with it, Uh, you know, watching Bruce Lee movies and stuff like that growing up, like a lot of, you know, young people, you know, it kind of inspired me a little bit. Um, and then when I met my wife, you know, she was very outgoing and we were always looking for something new to do. And we started bodybuilding and lifting weights. And while that kind of got me going down a healthy lifestyle, it it really didn't fulfill kind of some aspects I was looking for. And exercise was sometimes kind of grueling and, you know, it's not fun. And once I found uh, a martial art where I was exercising, but I kind of got my mind off, you know, life for a minute and was able to kind of focus and zone in on it. Uh, it kind of changed my, my outlook on exercising. So it was, I think finally finding something just by chance. Um, they really kind of, uh, it got me to relax after working out and it didn't seem as much work, even though it was a lot of work. 
Um, so that really kind of appealed to me, being able to go and exercise and be able to kind of get away from life for a minute and really get a good workout and um, have fun while doing it. So that's kind of what, what drew me to it. And, I, and I'm going to ask you more about, I'm fascinated by that. I'm going to ask you more about uh, jujitsu in a minute. Um, as, as I mentioned a while ago, Luke and I were talking about bike riding and, um, you know, how for me it becomes almost like meditation once I kind of hit the zone. So I want to hear more about jujitsu um, and what it is. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about you guys trying to decide where you were going to, whether you were going to go with Texas or Tennessee, what, what. Was there a deal breaker there? Was there one thing that made you decide to go to Dyersburg? You know, I would mainly, I think we had already lived in Texas and, and been there, done that a little bit and, you know, looking for a new chapter in life. And, um, you know, we thought when we looked at Dyersburg, we were initially going to move to Jackson and then from moving from the big city, we just really wanted somewhere good to raise our boy. And, you know, uh, Denver was very expensive and the neighborhood we bought a home in was not the best. And it was, it was very expensive. And so we decided to sell that, pay all our debt off and move to Dyersburg instead of Jackson, just to try and get in a little bit of a smaller town where it's a little safer and uh, a good place to raise our child. So that was, that was the reasoning by, by going to Dyersburg. And did you, are you in the city part of Dyersburg or did you buy land or are you on a farm or where'd you, where'd you move? We uh, were originally living in Kenton for a minute, but we just uh, bought a home on an acre in Tremble. Um, we're going to be, we got a hold of a few acres and we're going to be planting some grapevines there as well. So looking to farm a little bit and uh, we'll be planting those next year. So we're not technically in Dyersburg, but we drive about 30 minutes to go teach there every day. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, so how do you like uh, small town living? What, what were some of the adjustments yeah, I get this a lot and everybody's like, you know, what, what, what did you think of moving here? And uh, when I was a little bit younger, when I turned about 18, 19, I kind of um, hit the road and experienced all of Western United States. Uh, you know, I went to California, Oregon, Washington, and I decided to settle in Oregon around Mount Hood. So um, I've lived in a lot of small little mountain towns and some small towns in Texas. So uh, the adjustment really wasn't... Um, as drastic as some people think it would be for me. Uh, you know, I lived in some small little lake communities in West Austin, you know, in the hill country. So I've, I've, I've been accustomed to some small town living, even though growing up in San Antonio, it's the ninth, ninth biggest city in the nation. So it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a big, big city I grew up in. So I, you know, I've, I've experienced a little bit of all of it, but I, I, I like getting out of the rat race and slowing down and enjoying life a little bit. As somebody who also moved from a bigger city to a to a rural community, I have to say one of the things I love the most are the sunsets. Like, you know, and my wife and I both comment every night, we never get tired of how much sky we can see here. I mean, it just goes on and on. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I love Western Tennessee. It's been good to me so far. And, you know, we're we're um invested our future and, you know, building our businesses here. So I'm I'm looking forward to actually spent a lot of time in West Tennessee and uh, I do think it's beautiful here and I, and I love it actually. So what, what um, did you do uh, when you first got here? You obviously didn't just jump right into, and is it called a studio a, a or a gym? Uh, we call it a dojo for, for short. Um, you know, a lot of people call it, you can call it the gym, uh, but we call it our dojo with our members, just kind of uh, a nod back to the old judo Japanese style tradition of martial arts. Um, you know, my story getting here was pretty, um, uh, I don't want to get too long into this, but it was, uh, it's been kind of dramatic, uh, with the move. So, um, when I first moved back, I was recovering from cancer. I had uh, throat cancer. Uh, we found out two days after we signed the line to sell our home in Denver. So it was, uh, very surprising. And I just had a swollen lymph node and, um, we ended up, uh, we'd already sold our house. We ended up staying with some of our teammates because the doctors wanted to start treatment right away. And, uh, I was there for about eight months going through treatment, chemo and radiation. And once I finally finished treatment, we finished our move down here. And, uh, I was, while I was recovering, I just kind of got some work, uh, working on a peach farm locally and just kind of enjoyed being outside and 
working as much as I could while I was rebuilding my strength. And once I uh, rebuilt my strength a little bit, we went down to local YMCA and we talked to Mr. Randy Butler and we were interested in maybe opening there before we moved to our own building. A lot of jujitsu gyms use this kind of uh, model when they start. And after talking to him with a minute, um, they showed us a huge area that was used for storage for about 25 years in the old high school. So we cleaned that out and it took about six weeks and we put electrical in there and lighting. And uh, now we have a world-class studio there with almost 3000 square feet, which rivals any kind of gym in a big city like Denver or LA. Wow. So um, obviously um, you were living health healthily, you were exercising, um, the diagnosis I'm sure was put you guys in a tailspin for a little bit must have. Um, I'm glad that, um, everything is great now. Um, what, what role did jujitsu and, and what you've learned there, what did that play in, what role did that play in your treatment? You know, having a strong mindset first off, you know, and, uh, it's really easy to get down when you're going through that treatment stuff. And every time I felt myself feeling that way, you know, I just thought about, uh, elderly people and young kids going through it and, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and that's even tougher. So, um, just having a strong mindset, um, you know, before I got into martial arts, you know, I didn't have a healthy lifestyle. I smoked cigarettes for 25 years. Um, I tried every fad out there to quit and nothing worked, you know, it worked for a day or two. And, um, I had to find something I loved more than cigarettes and, it took a while for me to find that. And I didn't find martial arts till I was in my late twenties, 29. Um, I've been training now for I'm 45. So I've been training now for about 15 years and, um, it's done a lot for me and my family as far as just kind of getting me on the right path to living a healthy lifestyle. Like I said, I tried quitting smoking multiple times and, you know, nothing kind of worked. And, you know, I decided that, martial arts was going to be it once I found it and found out I loved it and I loved my wife and I wanted to be there for her. So, you know, that's kind of what finally got me to quit smoking cigarettes, martial arts and my wife. That's incredible. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening right now who struggle with, uh, quitting smoking or dipping snuff or, you know, any of those. So, um, I'm sure you're an inspiration to them. So you, you guys, um, Opened opened a dojo. Yeah. Um, obviously, you were probably like all of us. Anybody starting something new, you know, you were um, probably nervous about whether or not folks were going to come. Just like when Robert Kirkland built Discovery Park, a lot of people told him nobody was going to come, but you know, he proved them wrong. Um, have you had people uh, sign up and learn jujitsu at your dojo? Uh, yes, we're very. I wouldn't say we're pleasantly surprised. Uh, I always had confidence in uh, our ability to teach. Uh, I've been teaching now for about seven years. So at our old gym in Denver, which had about 300 members on average, um, you know, I've been teaching for a while now, kids and youth and adults. So um, I always knew our ability was there. And we did hear that a lot. And especially from a little bit of the older generation, we moved here and we knew that it's just like anywhere in America, you know, um, people will want to do it if they find out about it and, you know, realize that it's got benefits and especially for the youth. I mean, learning how to defend yourself and be confident in yourself and a real confidence. A lot of martial arts nowadays, um, you know, they're hitting boards that snap very easily and they're, they're not really engaging with somebody else. They're kind of striking air it builds up a false confidence. And I think a lot of those kids, when they train in a martial art like that, then they go out and try to defend themselves and, and a very aggressive, angry kid can actually just beat them up through sheer aggression. And they realize that a lot of that stuff doesn't work. So our martial arts are very unique because at the end of every class, we actually grapple against a resisting opponent. And, um, you learn how to use these techniques we teach against a resisting opponent. And that matters a lot. And so you build a real confidence because you, you can feel it working against somebody trying to stop you. And, you know, with boxing or one of those combat sports where you're hitting the head a lot, it's not very good for somebody young to get repeatedly hit in the head, in my opinion. So you can't go 80, 90 percent boxing, you know, and not get hit in the head a lot, you know, and it's and I love boxing. So I'm not 
trying to be dismissive of that sport, but for youth, I think it's very important. They learn how to grapple and defend themselves when someone puts their hands on them and be able to do it as safe as possible, but be able, be able to really learn how to do it. Not just against going through motions in the air, how to do it against somebody trying to hurt you. And so I think that's what separates our martial arts is you can grapple. And it's very, for people that don't know what it is, it's, you know, if you visualize old Olympic wrestling, freestyle wrestling is something that it would look like. So it's just basically learning how to manhandle somebody and basically put them on the ground and hold them down and not let them hurt you. And so we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I want to elaborate some more on that. And I want to hear more about um, what jujitsu actually is, because I think a lot of our listeners are clueless. So um, if everybody will stay tuned, we'll be uh, right back. Jiffy Steamer offers the world's finest clothing steamers, steaming products, and steamer accessories. They've been in the USA since 1940 and now have more than 1,000 dealers across 55 countries. Jiffy Steamers are trusted by professionals such as Macy's, Neiman Marcus, Coach, and others. Find the Jiffy Steamer dealer closest to you at jiffysteamer.com. I hope you're enjoying the Real Foot Forward podcast from Discovery Park of America. If you are, please be sure to subscribe, to rate, you know, with four stars or five stars, whatever it is, and leave a positive review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. It helps us get the podcast out to more people. This is your host, Scott Williams, and our guest today is John Perez, who's telling us all about his dojo, Dogwood BJJ, in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which is conveniently located to a lot of us here um, in Northwest Tennessee. So, John, give us a give us a beginner's overview of exactly what is um, what it, what self defense. I know I read a little bit about you know how you were really passionate about anti bullying um, and healthy lifestyle. So, tell me a little bit about how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fits in with that. Okay, well, start with the healthy lifestyle. You know, to get good at Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you really have to train consistently. It's not something you can dabble in and, you know, I'm going to go once a week and see how good I get at this. It's, it's much like any other art or craft that you have to hone. You know, you have to put time into it to, to, to be good at it. And I think it teaches great discipline. And especially for the younger generation, teaches them, to be good at anything, you have to work hard at it. So it's, it's special in that way. And then, um, for a lot of people, you alluded to it a while ago, for a lot of people, when you say jujitsu, the first thing they think of is punching a board with your hand. That's not really what it's all about, right? Yeah. And we get the, Oh, it's like karate like a lot. So that's a ongoing joke inside the, the BJJ community. And, uh, it's far from it. So it's, if I was going to describe it to somebody, you know, in a, in a, in a short answer, it's very much like Olympic freestyle wrestling. So, you know, you're, you're dealing with when somebody puts their hands on you and then going back to the youth, this is why it's uh it's a great martial art, especially for younger uh, people is because you're not punching or kicking while you defend yourself. So if somebody's trying to attack, say like, a 10 year old, somebody that's in, you know, fifth or sixth grade, you're going to teach them how to be able to take this person down the ground and hold them down. And that way, when a teacher or um, an adult comes by, you're not punching or kicking this person, you're controlling them. And you can be look at the adult and be like, this person's been trying to hurt me, you know, and I'm holding him down. And, um, and that goes a long way because it teaches them not to meet aggression with aggression. Um, so, you know, the techniques we teach them, we want them to learn how to take somebody to the ground safely if they can. And, you know, we're not trying to hurt somebody, but, you know, we are meeting somebody that's being aggressive. So, you know, you have to meet it a little bit, but you know, the idea is not to lose control and start hitting back a lot and trying to hurt that person, but just trying to wrangle them down like a, like a, like an aggressive cattle and put them on their back and rope their legs up so they can't hurt you. And so what's the relationship um, between um, what you're doing physically with your body, but also your mind. Is there a component of jujitsu that's mental? Yeah, and we'll go back to you uh, 
talking about the bike riding, how it really kind of would get you in that zone. You'd hit that moment where you, you'd be able to, to just ride and not really think about it, but you're doing it and you know, you clear your mind. So jujitsu is very much like that. It's a thinking man's game, even though it seems like wrestling and it's just brutish a little bit. It's far from it. Um, a lot of people refer to it as human chess. So it's, um, you're trying to checkmate an opponent through techniques. So you're trying to use their, their energy against them. So there's, a uh, an essence of timing technique and leverage used to beat a bigger, stronger opponent. So it's, um, it's interesting. So you have to think a lot. And once you've trained it and ingrained it, you get into muscle memory, but it is very much a Rubik's cube puzzle. However you want to look at it. It's very intriguing. Me and my wife did Muay Thai, which is kind of an Eastern style of boxing, but you use your elbows and knees as well. We've done judo. Uh, we've done wrestling. We, you know, we came from a mixed martial arts gym, so we've trained in a bunch of different arts but Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has always been a little more special to us because it's just, it's more intriguing. It's, it's, it's more of a, of you're trying to wrap your mind around it. It's very, it's very, it's got a lot of depth to it. You, know, you can really kind of take notes for days and start writing mind maps about techniques. There's push pull. There's very much set in traps and it's, um it's very much a, a thinking person's game. So it's, uh, it's not just strength. It's a lot of technique and thought and strategy. And I noticed on your Facebook page, uh, you have, you know, classes for women. There are a lot of, of, uh, people my age, uh, taking jujitsu. Um, is there any kind of age limits or how does that work? Are there different classes or, or if, you know, who, people who are listening, you know, where, wh where could they fit in? Um, that's a great question. So, we have people all the way up to 60 year olds that train with us. So um, now we are an interesting gym since we've only been open for a year and a half now. And, you know, we have a lot of members we've grown uh, on average. We have about 30 kids in the youth class every day. So this is not a small program where we've got five or six kids playing around uh, class is very serious. We, you know, we take self-defense very serious, but at the same time we have fun. Um, so ranges and genders you know we have a, a big woman's team and uh we let everybody come train with us now if somebody's got a little bit of a of an injury or they're a little older you know they won't have to try and learn every technique you know we work with everybody now we don't have a beginner and an advanced class like a lot of gyms do uh because we're fairly new so we're still working on the fundamentals and the basics and everybody that's a part of the gym right now still needs to work on that so we're in an interesting transitional part of our of our dojo, but everybody is welcome to come train. We provide a free class to come visit our school, take time on the mat to meet people, see what we're teaching, see if it's what they're looking for. And we have a pretty high rate of everybody that comes to try the free class ends up joining. So, you know, we really believe in what we're doing and we want to help everybody. So if it's a mom looking for self-defense or if it's a dad wanting to bring his child in and let them learn self-defense. Um, you know, we, we have techniques for everyone and we don't try and force something that might work for a athletic 25 year old for a 45 year old, you know, so there's, there's a little bit of flow. You know, we talk about, you know, being in the zone, there's, you know, there's a flow state we find and, you know, we jujitsu can adjust per person. It's very much like learning music you know, you can teach them chords and then they, they make the music they want. So we teach them techniques and they use ones that favor their body type or their gender and they build their own game off stuff we teach them. So it's, uh, it's unique like that. So what you're doing is obviously very inspirational on uh, a number of levels, both starting a new business, moving into a new town, uh, beating cancer. Uh, what, what inspires you? And it's a good question. A <laughs> lot. I mean, I've got a lot of coaches that helped me learn how to teach that inspire me. And, you know, we're very happy to bring a lot of those kind of world-class talents here into Dyersburg. Like we're going to be having an Olympian uh, friend of ours who's, uh, you know, represented our country in the 1996 judo Olympics. And, um, you know, she's going to be coming to teach a seminar. So I've got a lot of, people that taught me and helped me that inspire me. 
And, you know, when you join a, a gym like this, it's kind of different. It's not like going to join, say, like a Gold's Gym or some kind of fitness center. You know, we go and compete and, you know, we we test ourselves against, you know, people from other schools and competitions around the state and the country. And, you know, you, you form a bond with your teammates through this, you know, because we help each other train as a team. But when you go compete, you know, you have that moment where it's just you and that other person on the mat. And, you know, win or lose, we don't care. We just care about you going out there and trying your hardest and not giving up and you learn from your matches. So there's, there's a great bond that, that kind of gets created with, uh, with members of, of jujitsu gyms. And that's kind of really what inspires me when I was sick up in Colorado, you know, we talked about, when we had our boy, we were going to move to either Texas or Tennessee, you know, to, to be around family. And my jujitsu gym stepped up and cared for my family the whole time I was ill. So that's the kind of stuff that inspires me. Yeah, that's incredible. If if people want to find out more about your dojo and and want to check it out, where can they go online to find out more? Okay, we have a web page, so it's just dogwoodbjj.com. So they can find a lot of info there about um, our history, our lineage, where we learned to train from. And they can also find us on Facebook. We have a Facebook business page, Dogwood BJJ. Or they can just pop into the YMCA of Dyer County and say hello. We have plenty of seating for parents to come in and watch class and take a look at what we're doing and uh, come on in and just meet us and, you know, say hello. And we we got some more paperwork and literature there about the benefits of jujitsu, especially for anti-bullying and for kids and youth. So what about tur- tournaments? Are there any uh, tournaments that you guys uh, have that I could come watch? Yes, uh, there's tournaments all over the state, but we put on one yearly to raise money for St. Jude Children's Hospital. We've been doing this for years now, and um, we find we can raise a lot of money and help a great cause. So this year we'll be having it at White Squirrel Winery. We're calling it BJJ in the Vines, and that'll be October 2nd. And we're looking for people to come out and spectate. Most of the money we raise is through the contestants. Uh, we provide a link. And so if they're going to compete in the tournament, they just donate straight to St. Jude's and then spectators come and watch for free. But we ask that, you know, they give a little something and help out as well. And that'll be all day long. And it's a great way to come out and see this martial art in its true form, which is going hundred percent. So we got people out there really doing jujitsu and you'll be able to see its effectiveness and also be able to have a great time and even more than that for a great cause. Hey, thank you so much, man. This has been an inspirational episode of our podcast. Thank you for, for uh, joining us. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me very much. Thanks to all of you listeners who've joined us today at Discovery Park of America. Our mission here is to inspire children and adults to see beyond. To plan an experience here for you and your family, visit discoveryparkofamerica.com.